Hello again, Slayers. It's me, Kyle, but I go by RoboSlicer in the Dauntless community. Sorry this video is a little late, the power's been crazy here in Texas, but nonetheless, this is going to be the Sub 3 Guide video for this week's trials. This week, we see Shadow Touch Drask. I didn't expect this one, to be honest, but who expects any kind of thing from trials this week? So in this video, we're going to go over build, drop time, strats, and everything to get you to Sub 3 the easiest way possible. So first, let's look at the modifiers. So what you're going to see, of course, is one chance you have no revive, so this is your one chance to get it. We'll see Behemoth Blitz, so he's going to be a bit faster, but we're not going to see that much of an issue since you're going to be slowing him down a good bit. You have uh, Umbral and Safe Stability, which means that that orb that Shroud throws at you that leaves you 1 HP will be thrown out occasionally. We also have uh, Splitting uh, Umbral, which is those little balls that you see during the Umbral Escalation. You also have the Umbral Mollusk, so that you'll see Gary kind of rolling around. Don't step in his slime or else you will get corrupted. And his uh, damage basically does shock damage so don't get hit and pot it before you go in so let's go ahead and look at the build so for this week's build i am using the half health tenacious it was aimed to be the best thing over any other build that i've created to get the sub three the easiest and without having it down so many times so you'll see plus six catalyst plus six cunning of course plus six predator because we're supposed to be good at dodging of course plus six rage because we want that sweet juicy extra damage tenacious because we're going to have a little bit of shield and get some cunning discipline so that we're at half health and weighted strikes because bonded to what we're using so for the we're using frenzy blitz and aether drive for our tonics for this we're going to use the pengar shrine with plus three catalyst put into there the Vulcan volcanic treads with plus three tenacious we're going to be using the mouth grasp with the predator in there of course and then lights virtue with plus three catalyst put into there and we're going to be using the Dark Watch with plus 3 Tenacious. And for the Death Blossom, we're going to be putting plus 3 Cunning, plus 3 Discipline, Raper Dance, Momentum Blade, and Bond to the Scarn Weapons. Alternatively, if you want a better time or easier sub 3, you can also use this build. It, I found it online a little while ago, and it seems to work pretty well. It does not use Predator because you do lose some life here and there because of the corruption, but you can use plus 6 Cascade to gain some life back and get a shield so you don't have that happen so often. Catalyst for duration and effectiveness, of course. Cunning for that sweet juicy crit damage, overpowerful when you stagger him and break apart. And you'll also be using Rage to get 25% increased damage no matter what. Berserk for a little bit more damage and Discipline to where it have health. The normal tonics we're going to be using, and then of course we're going to use the Pengar Shrine with plus 3 Catalyst put into there. The Volcanic Treads with plus 3 Rage put into there. Torgadorus Bronze with some Overpower. Light's Virtue with plus 3 Cascade. And Thrax's Head with plus 3 Cascade. And of course we're going to be using Berserk and Discipline, Specials Reaper Dance, and Momentum Blade because I'm bad at dodging. So first things first, let's look at the strats. Drop time is immediate. He's going to be walking around unlike most of the behemoths that we've encountered, but this one, he's going to be almost at the start where you'll be able to dash forward and pull towards him immediately once you drop in. Pot up, drop in, and pull towards him. Keep using your momentum blades of using the first or second build so that you can keep bouncing off of him. He does a lot of tail swipes, which he does a spin for, and he does a lot of swinging his arm down to do an explosion of corruption. So those are the only two things that I really noticed that do a lot of damage. They also, you'll see a lot of the orbs flying around. The orbs and the mollusk, aka Gary, are the also the biggest factors on why you're going to get down and corrupted and lose a lot of life. Dodge as much as you can. Again, Momentum Blades is your friend. Drop as much of, the, of your um, lantern taps down as you possibly can because you're using Aether Drive, so you'll be able to do that a lot. If you get the second build, pick up those orbs. You'll do a lot of damage, gain some health back if you step into the actual mollusk's little goo or get hit by those orbs. And, not to mention, you'll also be able to do more damage. And if you get that one purple orb, you will be immune to all other damages. If he hits you, it doesn't hurt. If you step into corruption, it doesn't hurt. And if those balls hit you, it doesn't hurt. And you'll be able to gain some additional damage onto him next time you hit him. Again, just don't get down. Do your best. There's no drop time. It should be a pretty easy sub three. I believe in you guys. Have a good nice day and happy hunting slayers. Here's the video.